This is Wretched Radio with Todd Friel. No, uh, I'm not buying time here. Really? I think I drive by the guy who plays this song in his car. Why do these people think that it's really fun for the rest of us to hear their thumpy thump music when they're driving down the road? And the kids with their eardrums, please note... I am not trying to buy time before we actually get to your phone calls because they scare me. What I just said is you scare me. But please call one 282 beep This is not to put it off, but I watched, well, sort of. I have to confess, I napped a lot through a TV show the other night. We're watching through whatever channel it was on. And we went, oh, that looks at least kind of interesting. It was called... A-T-H-O-S, I think, because I'm serious. It was like 87 minutes long, and I probably slept easily through an hour of it. It was a schnooze. It was supposed to be one of those moody pieces about these Eastern Orthodox priests on an island off of Greece, 2,000 of them. They're the ones who inhabit the island, and all they do all day is pray and study, pray and work, pray and study, And I was so grieved by it, and I was so reminded that so many people are lured into the Eastern Orthodox Church because they like the tradition, hey, I've got a connection to the original source, I'm in the true church. And I was reminded Eastern Orthodoxy just doesn't know the gospel. If this is any representation of what others believe, these priests all day were either praying to Mary there's a problem. And they were always praying, have mercy, Lord, have mercy. Lord. So they would be walking before they'd open up the door, Lord, have mercy. And they would go to cut a fish open, Lord, have mercy. They were putting sticks in the fire, Lord, have mercy. And it was an awful lot of Lord, have mercy. There was no gospel whatsoever. And they even described their desire to perfect themselves by doing these things, by constantly praying, mumbling, Lord, have mercy, and working and to be self-sustaining on an island. They were self-sanctifying. That's not the gospel. Furthermore, their desire was to be separate from the world. And I asked, well, what's the point of that? What, what, what are you accomplishing? How are people hearing the gospel from you? Not that they were actually preaching the gospel, but what is this accomplishing? This asceticism, this living in monasteries? No, no, and no. Luther was right. We're in the world, just not of the world. We are to be missionaries wherever we are. And you can't be when you're sitting on the island of Athos praying, Lord, have mercy. And then we watched, wasn't the same night, watched another show. I don't know the name of it. It was that good. It was the story where they were in Great Britain and they were on the Dover by the Dover Cliffs. Looked like it was kind of a tourist town. And the mom was Roman Catholic and she went to church. She came home and she said, You know, it dawned on me today. We said, Lord have mercy, 18 times during the Mass. And I hearken back to the island of Athos. Why would Roman Catholics and why would Eastern Orthodox have to constantly plead with God to have mercy? And the answer is because they don't believe that all sins, past, present, and future have been forgiven by Jesus Christ. Colossians chapter 2, nailed to a tree. Your transcripts, nailed to the cross, gone, totally forgiven. And I was reminded again, Roman Catholic Church and Eastern Orthodox churches, they do not have that joy because they do not have that gospel. You're not you're not wasting time, are you? No. <laughs> no, no. I'm what? What, 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 did something happen did I what? You seen maybe, any good movies lately? Maybe the island of Athos <laughs> put me back to sleep again. 1877282 beep. Church sign. Choosing Wait, 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 wait. Wow. I <laughs> Dude, you're a crack up. I haven't heard this in years. We used to do this so often. People would send in church signs that they would see. And honestly, it got to the point where it was overwhelming. Why? Because there's that many bad church signs. Wow. (laughs) Let's hear what this one is. Something tells me it's a Lulu. Church sign. Choosy moms. Who's Jesus. Jesus. Oh, yeah. yeah. (laughs) (laughs) That's right. 
First of all, decisional regeneration. Second of all, comparing Jesus to peanut butter. Whew. Church signs. They're tricky, I grant you. We can do better than that, can't we? One eight seven seven two eight two beep. Hey Todd, at our church, when we have music performers, or even maybe when um, the music is played for the offering, people in our church clap, and I don't because I believe that they're clapping for a performance. And what we do in church, the singing should be worship. I just wondered your thoughts on this. You could be right. You could perhaps consider that maybe, maybe they are rightly applauding God because they, we, we can do that. It's not easy to do. And quite honestly, this is a great opportunity to understand the difference between heaven and earth. We are going to be in heaven doing everything for the, to the applause of God. Everything. All right. I'm going to drink my berry punch body armor light, low calorie, no sugar added right now. <sighs> didn't do that for the glory of God. I will in heaven. You say, how? Because I'm going to be thinking God provided this. God has given this. God allows me to have a throat. He allows me to have hip ha stalsis. Hypo, hypo, what's, there's a process in your throat that causes it to go like a, like a snake, like that gets the rat down into its stomach. Is it hypostal, uh, something? St it's, it's the thing that causes the food to go where it needs to go and not come back up again. Put a little trap door there. Unless, of course, you got reflux. That's a different deal. But God gave us medicine for that, too. Point is, I'm going to be mindful of that in heaven, thanking God, giving him glory for every single thing. We're going to be enjoying it rightly. We're supposed to be doing that on earth. And a way that we could do that is if we see something that's glorious or we see something that is a great worship song, we hear it and appreciate it. Can we be applauding God? Yes, we can be. Perhaps those people are. Perhaps they're not. Uh, so I, I, I would, I would, I would put the best construction on it, and I'm going to say, yeah, that's that's why they're doing it. If not, you could actually bring it to the pastor and say, hey, pastor, I understand that we can clap to the glory of God. Do you think the congregation understands that, or is it possible we're following the footsteps of the world who applaud after a singer sings a song that we like? Because we should see a rose in a field and be giving glory to God for it. And some people actually do that. But I've never seen anybody in a field see a rose and go, <laughs> it's probably that we're following the patterns of the world, but you could put the best construction on it, bring it to your pastor and say, maybe, you know, maybe pastor, if you ever think about it, reminding people that, hey, when you applaud, don't applaud man. Be applauding God for giving these men and women the skills to do that. Then I think it can be just fine. one 282 beep I just heard Todd uh, on a Witness Wednesday encounter, and he told somebody, when you fall away from the faith, it usually means that you were never saved in the first place. I shouldn't have said usually. <laughs> salvation is usually a radical, life-changing encounter. And I agree with that completely. Maybe develop that for us explicitly where, from the Bible, you teach that. A man must be born again. Jesus told Nicodemus. So that alone is is birth a big deal. We'd go, yeah, we all oh, the miracle of birth, and oh, they're gonna have a baby, and the baby's healthy, and it's just amazing. Look at what God knit together. Well, that's how we see a birth. It's a big deal. The new birth, bigger deal. So there is that. Unless a man is born again, he will not inherit the kingdom of God. Furthermore, we should see from the preaching that we see in the book of Acts, the book of Acts really should be better titled The Preaching of the Apostles. Nevertheless, we see preaching and we see people responding and, and their lives are radically altered. They gather together for fellowship. They share with one another. They study the word together. They hear preaching together. You just see radical change. Now, having said that, and again, we will explore this in way more det detail next week. I, I, I think you're going to find it a really wild ride through the history of evangelicalism in America. Next week, we're going to do that. Maybe Monday. Maybe. And you're going to see that the revivalists desired to make sure people had that radical experience. 
Because if you've been saved from death, you remember it. It is a remarkable event, and your affections are changed, and your desires are changed, and you're headed in a new direction. So I would cite for you biblically all the commands in the New Testament, about three dozen of them, to repent. That's pretty radical stuff when it's like, whoa, I didn't used to like to do that. Now I do, and I used to hate that, but now I love it. Now I love what I hate. It's a radical sort of affair. Having said that, the revivalists insisted you have that. And so they went about the business of trying to manipulate that many times. But they were concerned about dead orthodoxy and not being concerned about the urgency of the new birth. Much like the pietists in response to the Lutherans that had been in the Reformation, they were worried about the apathy and the eh, taking it kind of light. Well, you know, it's grace and we're good. No, they were concerned about it. And so were the revivalists. And we should be, too. But let's be careful, though, for those people who don't perhaps have the recollection of that experience figured out yet, that we don't make it an, a, an issue that is the only way that you're going to get to heaven. This is Wretched Radio. I'll be needing to see some identification, young man. Why? Because you, my friend, are a lawbreaker. No, I'm not. You are, according to this video from Ray Comfort. Production. I need the clips on time. 911, what's your emergency? We met about Yeah, he asked me this. to become a gospel partner, and he took my credit card. 